yo what's up guys it's your boy sunny delight back again and before i even start the video if you're not sub hit the sub button why not it only takes one second and you never know you might like my content if you don't unsub i'm happy if you do that but if you give me a chance that really means a lot to me and also i've been sorry that i was gone yesterday i know i said i was going to start uploading daily but every time i tried to get on my playstation for gameplay it just said like sign on to playstation network bullshit and when i did it would just be like oh error and it just basically wouldn't let me even use my playstation at all so i couldn't even watch netflix last night so i'm sorry for y'all but y'all gotta be sorry for me too because i was netflixless last night and it was horrible but anyways today we're gonna get into mama's house series part four which takes place the day after yesterday's uh part three so if you haven't seen the previous part or any of them i'll link them down in the description just click the description they'll be down at the bottom you can pick any one you want i recommend you start from one go to two then three and then watch this video but let's get into the video guys so guys this part takes place literally right after part three and basically uh i was at work i worked at target at the time and i get a text from cody while i'm at work or i think a snapchat and he was like yo we should hang out again yesterday was cool i was like for sure bro i'll come there after work so i get out at like 5 5 30. i go to his crib and um little did i know he was gonna have the brilliant idea well it was kind of me too but we were both just like yo we should trip and bro if you know if you know one thing about me if you've ever watched my videos i'm not gonna say no to acid I'll say no to a blunt before I say no to acid. <laughs> but basically, he's like, yo, this will be fun. It'll be cool. And uh, we'll basically have, like, the kitchen to cook for ourselves. And I got the hacked fire stick. The Amazon fire stick that's hacked. So we can watch any movie we want. Cheech and Chong, uh, Harold and Kumar, all that. He's got it all. So I'm like, bet, bro. I appreciate that. You a real one. But he couldn't find anybody who sold it. So I had to go on my Snapchat. And I'm, I started looking around. And uh, you got to be careful with this stuff. Because, you know, if, if it looks sketchy, it's sketchy. Like, it's going to be sketchy. So you have to make sure the person selling it is actually, like, you know, knows what they're doing. And can show you a test kit and everything. We were pretty young, so we didn't do that. I'm just giving out advice. Because if you're going to do acid, do it the right way. And basically, while I'm sitting there waiting for somebody to hit me back, I look at Cody and I'm like, yo, I just remembered. I got some codeine in my backpack and uh, backwoods. And he's like, yo, I got like just enough wood for a backwood. So we go to the store, drive there real quick, grab a, I think it was like a two liter Sprite. And we got some plastic cups out and we started pouring up, sipping. And then we roll up this backwood, we smoke it. And as we roll up this backwood, like as we're rolling, uh, somebody hits me back. He's like, yo, I'm going to come drop off the tabs. I'll be there and, you know, woody woo woo, however much time. We're like, cool, bet. So we end up smoking this wood. And by the time we're done smoking this wood, already high as fuck off the wood, off the codeine, this dude shows up and he's like, all right, I got the tabs here. And me and Cody just kind of like, I know he was thinking the same thing. Because when he dropped the tabs off, I just thought to myself, I was like, oh, fuck, I kind of forgot about this, bro. <laughs> so basically unprepared as fuck for this trip if you don't know you're always supposed to go prepared or like have a have some type of game plan for psychedelics it never really works out but it's just better to have one because then when you start tripping really hard you just remember like oh i was gonna go do this or something to keep yourself occupied but he drops these tabs off and i i remember this uh i took mine before his and then he popped his and we just looked at each other Turn on Cheech and Chong. And I'd say, like, we got to the part of the movie where they're in the, uh, when they just got out of jail. Just got out of jail, and the screen just starts, like, I don't even know, bro. Like, I'm looking at it, and it's, like, moving. Like, I, I know that's stupid, because it's a movie, and it's a picture, basically, with moving pictures. But, like, it looked like it was coming outside the screen and, like, touching me and shit. I was like, oh, my God. There's no way this is acid. Like, I must be on DMT or something. So, if you can't tell, basically what I'm telling you is, 
me and Cody are tripping balls at this point, and I think the shit was hitting him harder than it was for me, because I remember I have this video on my Snapchat memories, and it's just me. The camera's on me at first, and all I say is, this boy tripping balls, bro. I turn the camera around, and Cody's just staring up at the ceiling, laying down on his bed, holding a empty Sprite can on his chest, and he's just like, bro, I'm tripping balls, bro. Every time I try to talk to him, he'd be like, he'd say like two words and just go silent, like radio silent. I'd be like, yo, man, so is it hitting for you? And he'd be like, yeah, bro. And just nothing like that, just nothing after it. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, if he's tripping balls and he, you know, he obviously can't like conversate right now. I'm going to go to the other room in the house. And if you haven't seen the other parts, I'll just say, this room that I go to is very notorious later on in the series, and especially in this one, but uh, I'm like, yo, I'm going to go across to the house, lay down, get on my phone, watch some Hulu or something, you know, just wait for the, the peak to wear off, because basically we were just peaking, and if you don't know what that is, on psychedelics, it's like two hours of the trip where it's just like insane trip, tripping balls, like seeing dragons, not really, but you get the point. So I go across the house, and I go to this room, pitch black, bro, creepy mirror on one side, and the bed frame is like this creepy old western bed frame kind of thing, like made out of wood, but it looks like a, a farmer or cowboy would own it. I'm trying to paint a picture for you, but I don't know if I'm doing a good job, but it's just creepy in there, and I'm laying down, and I remember I looked over at the mirror, biggest mistake of my life. I look down over at the mirror, and it looks like I'm standing up in front of it. But I'm laying down on the bed when I see this. I just start tweaking out. Like, basically, this made things 20 times worse because, oh, my God. I saw that, and then I would close my eyes, and I would just hear, like, fire crackling and, like, people screaming. And I, I just keep sitting down there and telling myself, like, oh, it's the trip, bro. It's the acid. It's just the acid. And there was, like... One whole minute that I counted, like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, where I would just do that for a whole minute. And I did that for a whole minute without feeling my heartbeat once. And that's when I started tripping. And I started like, I guess I started gasping for air because this is when Cody remembers like getting up and coming to check on me. And he said all he heard from this from like across the house was just like, I don't even know what that was. That was like my best Ethan noise, but I guess he heard that he came like he started coming closer to the room I was in. And what he didn't know was I heard him coming. And I was like, as I heard his footsteps getting closer, I was just like starting to beat on my chest and like gasping for air. So like when he opens the door, I could be like, look all normal and be like, yo, bro, what's up? Because I felt like since he was tripping balls and I had more experience, I had to be like, you know, kind of normal for him like to be there for him <laughs> so i'm over here like beating my chest and gasping and he opens the door <laughs> and this is like a joke me and him will forever have he opens the door and i just go Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> and i do that and i just see him fucking jump and run away like i see him jump and he's just like ah! <laughs> he runs away and about like 10 minutes later, I walk out to go talk to him and be like, yo, my bad, bro. I was tripping balls. And he's already leaving his room. I'm like, yo, Cody, where are you going? He's like, I got to tell my grandma, bro. I got to wake her up. And like, I, tr I, I thought I said it. Like, I could have swore I told him, no, don't go, Cody. Like, don't tell her. But I guess I didn't because he didn't hear me. He said he never heard me say that. And I didn't follow him down the hallway because it was, like, pitch black. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing this shit again. <laughs> so he, he, like, he goes, gets his grandma, I guess. And I'd say, like, an hour later, I'm still tripping balls. I go out into the living room. The hall, hallway light is on now. So I'm like, cool, I'll make it to the living room. The demons won't eat me. So I go down to the living room. And Cody's sitting there with his grandma. And she looks at me, and I swear to God, she looks so angry. Like, he said that she was, and he was like, nah. Uh, she was just asking me, like, did he force you to, like, take it, or did he persuade you? 
And Cody told her, like, nah, bro, I took it on my own own will and everything. But when she looked back at me, I was tripping balls, bro. And, like, it looked like her face was, like, getting angrier and angrier. So I just, like, <laughs> ran back to the room, and I just tripped balls for, like, the next 30 minutes. I was like, nah, I'll just go trip balls instead of potentially deal with his grandma being angry at me and making me trip even more balls. Now, 30 minutes later... I'm good. Like, I'm not peaking anymore. I'm not at, like, the peak of my trip. So I'm good. I walked back out. And I guess his grandma turned on, like, Popeye the Sailor Man. If you've ever seen those cartoons where he, like, eats the spinach and gets bigger arms and everything, he was watching that. And I sat down with him. And eventually, like, his grandma and him and me were all just cracking jokes and everything. And, bro, I remember these episodes of Popeye were, like, five minutes long. But every time one ended, me and Cody would look at our phones and be like, ain't no way, bro. I could have sworn like a whole hour just went by in only five minutes. Uh, oh, excuse me. I, I had to burp. Only like five minutes would go by. That shit was crazy to me. Now, oh boy. Oh, damn, that voice cracked though. Sheesh. Anyways, we're watching Popeye the Sailor Man. I'd say like 30 minutes goes by and his grandma is like, okay. I'm going to go back to sleep. I have work in the morning. Try not to die in my living. That's basically what she tell, tells us. Now, Cody gets the bright idea to turn on uh, Jimi Hendrix. And if you don't know who he is, quick little summary. He's basically a dude who, during the 60s, made music at hippie festivals, basically. And played at hippie festivals where people did a lot of acid. And he's famous for, like, putting rows of acid inside his headbands and everything and on stage and just performing like that which is pretty incredible low-key but he gets the bright idea to turn this on and we're just watching the tv screen and it, I, i'm basically just looking at Jimi hendrix talking to me pretty much because it's a picture of him like his face his photograph but to me it looks like a video and it looks like him talking or something aka i'm still tripping balls so i look at him and i'm like hey bro can you turn something else on or something like it's kind of freaking me out a little bit he's like yeah for sure he turns on red hot chili peppers which their album covers are pretty much already trippy without being on anything so 30 minutes of that goes by i'm just like yeah no nah, no nah, bro if you could turn on like workaholics or like a comedy or something I remember he turned on Workaholics and we started from the beginning. And, bro, that show is perfect for psychedelics and being watching it on drugs. Because we were watching it and it, like, me and Cody both saw this. It looked like as they were talking, their faces and heads got, like, bigger and smaller and, like, smaller face, normal size head. All that weird shit. As we're, excuse me, as we're watching that, we're just, like, looking at each other like, dude, this is fucking trippy. And I guess we watch it till, like, I'd say, like, um, from, like, 3 a.m. all the way to 6 a.m. Because around 6 or 7, Cody was like, yo, I'm going to go to sleep, bro. And I was just like, okay, that's cool, bro. I'm going to go step outside because his grandma, like, lives on a golf course, like I said before. And I was like, cool, I'm going to go step outside and relax. Oh, and that reminds me, earlier in the night, too, we had gone out there to smoke some cigarettes because... I don't know it, it doesn't do anything it's nothing beneficial to like add to the high smoking a cigarette while on psychedelics but it's just nice it's soothing so we had gone out there probably around like 1 or like 12 a.m and i remember cody looked up and the way his like grandma's like back porch was set up it was like a pole and then two lights on each side and he was he like he was looking up and talking to me he was like yo mark the wall man is talking to me <laughs> And I look up and I see what he's talking about. It looks like a face, pretty much. And I was like, I mean, you're not talking to me, man, but that's pretty trippy, bro. I also fondly remember that we probably smoked like a whole pack of backwoods, like no weed in them. Just we took it out the pack and just lit it up and smoked it throughout the night, which was pretty god awful because we ran out of cigarettes pretty early on. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much the story. If you guys liked it, drop a like. Drop a comment down below. I really appreciate that. It helps the video. It helps it get pushed into the algorithm. So if you want to help your boy out, drop a like, drop a comment. 
Maybe drop two if you're feeling generous. But it's been your boy, Sunny Delight. Peace. I'll be back tomorrow.